Good afternoon. Not a video I ever expected to make, but I thought I'd make it anyway. With the current situation in the world, with um, the threat of potential power cuts this winter, the prices of everything going through the roof, whether it be food, fuel for your vehicle, electricity, gas, whatever it is, the prices are just shooting up to ridiculous sums and the forecast for the next few months is even worse. Now, the UK government have uh, told us that, of course, they've got plenty enough power supplies and gas supplies to keep us all going through the winter. So if that's what the UK government tells us, then believe the opposite, because they're all a shower of self-saving a-holes and they don't give a damn about you and me. So I would suggest preparing for the worst. Hopefully it won't happen, but just a few things just to prepare for the worst. And some of the obvious things, if we do lose electricity, is obviously over here on the right is light. So you want a selection of uh, candles. And I don't mean to light up every room, you're gonna choose one room basically to live in, well I am, and it'll be this room, the kitchen. Um, so I'll have a candle going in here. I've also obviously got a flashlight, and don't forget your batteries, make sure you've got some decent batteries in reserve, so that when you are moving around the house, you're not carrying candles with you, you've got a proper light source. In the centre is uh, an alternative cooking system. This is just a simple little trangia spirit burner. Just wondering, this one itself is a little mini kit, what you would take camping. You don't need all that. You just need the spirit burners and you can get them off um, that well-known auction site for about six or seven pounds. Worth having in. All you need to buy is some alcohol to burn in it. I tend to use uh, methylated spirits, but there are other things you can use. I haven't got the methylated spirits here on the table. That's out in the shed. I don't want that in the house until absolutely necessary. And the last thing is, so we've got cooking sorted, we've got lighting sorted, but now there's heating, which accounts for this, this odd arrangement that I've got here. Um, this is a, a ceramic, uh, not ceramic, it's a terracotta plant pot. It's about six inches diameter, and here is uh, a loaf tin. This is a two pound loaf tin. It's heavy gauge. And what I shall do is, I shall put that upside down on there, like that. The tea lights here, one or two underneath, some nice long matches, make sure you've got the long handle matches, both for the cooking and for doing this. They go underneath. On the top here, stack a few coins, and then a saucer upside down. And what will happen is, the heat will come up inside here, It'll hit the underside of the saucer and it'll spill out. And of course, the pot itself will warm up and radiate out heat. Now, this, is what, this will warm up a medium-sized room. The room I'm in now. It would do this. Um, you could have two going, if, you know, if you had a bigger room, I suppose. But for me, one will do. And... Uh, That'll keep me warm. I'll, obviously I would put it on the floor because as we all know heat rises, it's no good being sat at the table. And of course, even though this is a heat resistant tray, it needs to be stood on something. Um, I've got a, a marble slab that I shall put on the floor, this on top, and then get everything going. Remember you're talking naked flame here, so you, we don't want to be messing about. Um, make sure it's all stable. Um, to keep things safe. It, 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 this would be awkward, very difficult if you've got young children. I appreciate that. But I don't have, I've, fortunately I don't have to worry about something like that, or pets. But it's something you need to think about. You do need an alternative source of heating. Yes, you can put a hot water bottle in your bed, assuming you've got yourself a, a means of uh, boiling water to fill up your hot water bottle. So in bed anyway, you should be able to keep warm. 
but you do need one room in the house lit and warm and somewhere where you can cook. Uh, that's just my penneth worth of what I think and an idea of what uh, I'm buying in. Um, hopefully I, I won't need it and I'll look stupid. I hope so. I hope so. And it's, it all blows up and it proves and I'm proved wrong. But somehow I don't think I will be proved wrong. Um, I'll do this. I'll make this a part one. I may do a part two, for instance, because if we've only got one ring, you need to know what to cook on one ring. And I know a lot of people either can't cook or won't cook. So I've got a few ideas for one pot meals and things you can buy in, which remember food's going up all the time as well in price. So if you have a little bit of stock in, I'm not saying one of these prepper pantries you see on YouTube where they've got six years worth of food. No, no I'm not talking about that. I'm talking enough to get you through an immediate crisis, you know, two, three weeks or so. Just so that you've got enough in so that you're not you're not having to go hunting around trying to find food which may be scarce and if there's no power of course supermarkets and uh, tills and uh, cash points they're not going to be working are they? so it's going to be a cash society if you can find a shop that, that actually opens I don't know, I don't know what they would do in the event of that I assume they'll have some sort of emergency plans maybe emergency generators in stores I have no idea but I'm going to take precautions yeah, it's, it's August at the moment, coming to the end of August, it's boiling hot. Looking at this sort of stuff, you think, well, I don't believe me, come the end of October, November, December, you'll be wishing you had some of this. Anyway, I'll stop now and uh, speak to you on the next one. Bye for now.